Let's talk about... Oh, welcome back. Let's talk about how the different magma, which is determined on where it's melting from, forms different volcanoes and the hazards that we just talked about associated with each of those volcanoes, as well as the rock types associated with those volcanoes. So there are a few common types of volcanoes. Um, there are cinder cone volcanoes, which tend to be the smallest. Composite volcanoes. This is When we think about volcanoes, this is what we typically think about in our mind. It's what we're picturing, these composite volcanoes. Um, they're bigger. Uh, form some of the most scenic mountains of Earth, uh, and they tend to be very explosive. Much bigger, so now don't look at this, uh, these pictures. If you look at this scale, that's a little bit better <coughs> example. So uh, cinder cone volcanoes, about a mile wide, a few hundred feet tall. Composite volcanoes, maybe about 10 miles or 15 kilometers wide, three kilometers tall, or just a little uh, under two miles. Shield volcanoes, very wide, about 100 miles wide, 9 kilometers, so about 5 or 6 kilometers in height. Uh, but don't let their size fool you. They're very gentle, erupting volcanoes. And then there's also, um, so those are the three common types of volcanoes. And then there's also something called super volcanoes. Now, these are more uncommon, but I will dabble on them. Fortunately, these types of eruptions, these type of volcanoes don't happen, happen excuse me, too often. <clears throat> so again, here's just another look at those. You know, this the pictures don't do it justice because they all look the same size. They're not. You gotta look at the scale. So I guess my fault. So first up is a cinder cone volcano. It is the very it's the simplest type of volcano. Um, these types of volcanoes occur when small little particles and blobs of lava, tephra, uh, known as cinders, lapilli size, are ejected from a volcanic vent. The lava is blown very violently and quickly to the air. Um, there's a lot of gas pressure behind it, so it cools very quickly, and the tiny little cinders, lapilli, rain down all around the vent. So since these uh, uh, are cinders that are falling, these cinders kind of form and build up very quickly and form this very cone-shaped volcano. They rarely grow larger than uh, about a thousand feet or so above their surroundings. Um, so it's a lot of a lot of gas, a lot of little particles being shot out. That's my sound effects of a cinder cone volcano. A lot of little spittle kind of just being shot out. Um, it cools very quickly, falls right around the vent, kind of forms these very loose cinder-based uh, little volcanic vents, hence cinder cone. As the cinder cone is dying out, it might have some lava flow event that may occur as the eruption is ending, as the gas is kind of making its way out, and just kind of the last little oozing blob of material. Types of igneous rocks that may be common around cinder cones are scoria and or basalt, those extrusive igneous rocks in some of the mafic realm. So again, you get some sort of vent, and you get these, you know, little cinders, you know, a lot of gas here. So these cinders get blown up and rain down pretty close to the vent. And over time, they kind of build build this, this cone-shaped uh, structure and cinder cone. So again, a lot of these little blobs sh being shot out and forms uh, this quick-cooling vesicular uh, rock called scoria. And sometimes, again, basalt may end the... Uh, eruption as all the gas is gone, but the remaining lava just kind of oozes out. Uh, Laysan Volcanic National Park in California. This is a cinder cone volcano, very cone shaped. You can see the lo resulting lava flow. Uh, the flank of Mount Edziza in British Canada. Here's another um, uh, uh, cinder cone volcano, very cone shaped with the, the resulting lava flow that came after. Oftentimes you can find these volcanoes uh, on the flanks of larger composite volcanoes. Just another vent that this material is coming out of. Uh, and then Paracutin uh, in Mexico, again, cone-shaped volcanic field uh, afterwards. You can see little structures here. Um, 
it looks like they kind of harvest something from up here. I, I don't know, minerals or what, uh, but it looks like there's some sort of little structures here. So you can see about how big they are. These look like little sheds or something. So they're very, you can climb them. They're, again, maybe a thousand feet tall, a little less, few hundred feet. So they, they are very accessible. And they're very common <clears throat> as far as volcanoes go. Next size up, we get composite volcanoes. Um, as mentioned, they make up some of the world's most memorable mountains. Mount Rainier in Washington, Mount Fuji in Japan. Heck, the San Francisco Peaks in Flagstaff, that is an old extinct composite volcano. These also have very steep sides, but can be very, very tall. They're very, very tall. Um, the type of hazards associated with them are pyroclastic flows, lahars, uh, and ash. Lahar is like a... Um, uh, uh, kind of a mix of pyroclastic tephra with water, especially if there's ice or snow on a mountain peak. And with the eruption, the melting that material, you get water mixed with this rock material and kind of forms this slushy mud mud flow that races down the side of a volcano. That's what a lahar is. So those are common at this type of volcanoes, as well as a lot of ash. No lava. No lava typically at a composite volcano, more of a, an explosive event as Mount St. Helens was. Uh, andesite is a, as an intermediate extrusive igneous rock is common at these composite volcanoes. And these are definitely the most dangerous type of volcano. Now, uh, you could argue that a super volcano, if those were to erupt, I mean, the world would may be gone. But since those don't happen but every few hundred thousand years, these are the most dangerous common type of volcano. These happen very often, and tend, they tend to kill a lot of people, especially with their pyroclastic flows. <clears throat> the reason it's called a composite volcano is because as this erupts, um, you do get you know some sticky, not flowing lava, but that andesitic magma cooling very quickly, and then on top of it, the resulting ash or pyroclastic flow. And the next eruption, again, you get kind of the, the andesitic sticky lava material and then the pyroclastic or flow or ash so they're made up of layers they're stratified kind of lava lava flow ash lava flow ash when i say lava flow it's not really flowing it you get you, you get some material coming out and it just kind of stays put it doesn't really flow downhill so so lava isn't really a hazard here it's more so the explosivity of it so here's Mount Rainier uh, of Mount Rainier National Park in the state of Washington. Uh, I had the opportunity to climb it, and you better believe, you know, every so often in the back of my brain, you start to think, oh yeah, this is an active volcano. Hmm. Mount Fuji in Japan, not too far from Tokyo, one of the, the world's largest city as far as population-wise. Many people climb it and hike it. Active volcano. Mount St. Helens before. <coughs> Mount St. Helens after. Guess what? Mount St. Helens, so that, that erupted in 1980, the last major eruption, 1980. There's been small eruptions since then, and it's still pretty active, and people still hike and climb it. It could, it could erupt again. So again, 1980, 1982. Um, you'll, you, if you ever go here, you'll in the crater of where the eruption was, you'll see this little dome starting to reform. And that's just kind of hot gas is being vented out. But yeah, it's still very much an active volcano. Scary, scary stuff. Um, again, they're the most dangerous because they're very common. And when they explode, they go big. There's a lot of pyroclastic flows. And that's actually uh, the, the majority of the material that got erupted here, some of it was shot up into the atmosphere, but a lot of it ripped down the side of the mountain as a pyroclastic flow. All these trees just pff, gone. A um, number of people died in that eruption in 1980. And then the third common type of volcano is a shield volcano. Very large, broad volcanoes, and when you're looking at them from above, they look kind of like a round shield, like Captain America's shield. The lava that pours out of these is basaltic in nature, so very low viscosity, very runny. So therefore, when it erupts, it flows out in far in all directions. Just like if I were to pour some water on a table, it's going to flow in very far in all directions. Same thing here. So you get lava just flowing out far in all directions. So it doesn't really build up vertically. It builds up more horizontally. 
because of this very low viscosity basaltic magma coming from the upper mantle. Um, they build up slowly over time with six, uh, successive lava eruptions, hundreds of eruptions, creating many layers. They are not likely to explode catastrophically at all, more dangerous to property than life. Uh, examples of shield volcanoes include those in the Hawaiian Islands, especially volcanoes like Mauna Loa, Mauna Kea, and Kilauea. The type of rock common here is basalt. Go figure. Basaltic magma makes basalt on the surface. Um, Hawaii itself is fed by a hot spot. It sits right above a hot spot. Uh, it's a mantle plume. Uh, it's just a rare anomalous hot plume of material in the mantle that's causing the, the crust above it to melt to form magma, in this case, uh, or the upper mantle to, uh, to melt to form basaltic magma, cutting through the crust and erupting uh, in the middle of the Pacific Plate, um, forming the Hawaiian Islands. Um, so again, a lot of, a lot of uh, lava, you know, not so much uh, some of the other stuff. The cool thing about this is that it, as it's, the lava makes its way for tens of miles, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 miles, once it hits the ocean and cools, it's forming new land. So the Hawaiian, uh, some of the Hawaiian islands that are erupting, the big island of Hawaii, is getting bigger and bigger and bigger every day. So this is Mauna Loa in Hawaii. You can see much more broad than it is high. It's still very high, but it's much more broad horizontally. Uh, same thing with Mauna Kea, much more wide than it is tall. Uh, and then same thing with Kilauea. And then, so those are the common types. And then we get into something called supervolcanoes. Got a little bit to say. This tends to be interesting, so we're going to pause here. Uh, before we do, let me give you another part of the super secret code. It is the number nine. One more time. The number nine. I'll say it again. Number nine. When we come back, we'll talk about super volcanoes. Ooh, fun stuff. See you in a second.